again, thank you so much, everybody. So on tonight's agenda, like I said, we're gonna go through a little bit of a grounding with Oka. She always makes me feel calm and peaceful and relaxed as we begin our meeting. So we're so happy to have her and joining us tonight. We're gonna do some new member recognition with Antoinette. And then I'll go over a little bit of the organizational updates that we have tonight around 6.45, 7 o'clock. Um, and then we're gonna have Antoinette who's gonna give some other um, updates. We're gonna do some general committee updates with what's going on within the, the committee. We have a great slideshow tonight and we're gonna talk about the art gallery. We're gonna talk about bill updates. We're gonna talk about all the wonderful things that have been happening in our field, what we're doing tonight. We're gonna to have some open discussions and some Q and A right around um, just after seven o'clock. And then we're gonna go over the member of the month. Who is it? Is it you? Could be. We're excited to announce that person. And then we're gonna do some closing remarks and, and some other things. We are doing a little something different with this uh, meeting. So please bear with us. We're, we're making a few adjustments, but I think that you all will like them. And if you don't, then you can always hit us up and let us know and how we can do things better because we're here to serve you, our, our folks, our family, our friends, and most importantly, the IJ members. And so please, by all means, make sure that you're, you're ready and you're ready to go. Oka is about to lead us through some grounding. Oka, please. You take us over. Thank you, Lee. Hi, everyone. Beautiful people. All right. It's nice to be in community. My name is Oka, and I go by she, her, they, and them pronouns. I invite you to turn off your camera if you would like. You can even lay down or sit up. You can stand. I invite you to tap into your body and and see how it's feeling. Does it want to lay down or sit? Get comfy. Maybe you make any movements to get even 10% more comfortable. I'm gonna play some sounds and binaural beats in the background. All right, I invite you to close your eyes if not already so. Maybe you gaze down towards your nose. And take these next five minutes to just take time for you. If your eyes are closed, I imagine I invite you to imagine the curtains coming down or the lines closing away from the material and into you. And check in with how you feel. Check in with your physical sensations. Begin to ground your sit bone, your tailbone down into the surface below you. And feel the surface below you pushing against your sit bone. And bring your awareness in that place in the middle between the surface below you and your tailbone. Grounding, maybe even surrendering to the earth, to the space below you. And I invite you to exhale out any air that's in your lung. We have always even just a little bit of air in the lungs. So let it all go. And 
And then I invite you to take a deep, loving breath into your nose or your mouth and into your belly, filling up, expanding the belly, the heart. And then exhale out all of the air. Maybe you sigh it out, audible exhale, letting it go, softening the jaw, the shoulders on your exhale. A deep, loving breath in of community into the lower belly, the heart, providing this nourishing oxygen into your beautiful body and then letting go of that breath whenever it feels right. Audible exhale out, maybe sighing out, anything that doesn't serve you, softening the body. Inhale in love and compassion into your belly, your heart. And let it go. Let the air go, let all the fear and the doubt go. Softening the sit bone, the knees. And then maybe your lips are closed or maybe they're open and just begin to breathe in and out of your nose or your mouth. And begin to feel the cool air coming in, maybe into the nostrils down the windpipe into the belly and feel the warm air leaving. Feeling this air coming in, letting it go. It's okay if thoughts arise. We're human. We have over 50,000 thoughts a day. And I invite you to project your thoughts on a movie screen. visually seeing the thoughts in the movie screen and you are in the audience. Creating this unattachment from the thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are light. You are love. Gently bring your awareness into your fingertips. Maybe you wiggle your fingertips and you wiggle your toes and feel this unlimited source of love just entering your fingertips. And let this love just enter your body. Breathing in, I am, and exhaling out love. Breathing in, I am, and exhaling out, needed. 
deep breath in of I am. Here on your exhale, I am here. Right here is all we have, this moment of now. And the beautiful thing is now is happening all of the time. I acknowledge you for showing up in community, for taking time to breathe consciously, and for being you. Thank you for your energy in this beautiful space. Gently open your eyes if they're not already so. And take a look at all the colors your eyes get to see. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa. Thank you so much. Um, everyone, drop in the chat and let us know how are you feeling now that Oka has, has grounded us um, and definitely given us a moment of stillness. Um, thank you, Oka. Thank you, everyone, for being here. My name is Antoinette Radcliffe. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am the interim executive director at Mercy Justice. And I'm super excited to spend a little bit of time with all of you this evening. So before we get into the good stuff, right, from all of our committees, um, I just want to take some time and acknowledge one of our members who's here today. And so at the beginning of each of our member meetings, we take some time to acknowledge people who we recognize as official members. That doesn't mean that everyone is not welcome to our member meetings. It just means that we do take some time to to acknowledge those who are extremely dedicated. We recognize official members as people who have attended three out of four consecutive member meetings that's here on Wednesdays at 6.30 um, and who have also supported or participate in one of our committees. You'll learn about all of our committees in a little bit. And then also someone who has participated in what we call our new member orientation. Uh, which you'll also hear a little bit more about um, in later on in tonight's meeting. But wanting to thank and recognize Vita, Vita M, for consistently showing up to our member meetings this year, supporting two of our committees, and be on the lookout for an email from myself regarding your new member welcome package, Vita. So round of applause. Um, and just a huge thank you for supporting our work. Um, it is extremely critical that we have all of our members support when we're working on projects, advocating for campaigns. Um, and so we appreciate all of you. And so I'm going to pass it back over to my co-host, or rather our host tonight, Lee, um, to move us along in the agenda. Yes, thank you so much, Antoinette, and always thank you to the new members that consistently show up. Thank you, Vita. And so we have some organizational updates. We're hiring. Yes, the new executive director, you know, Taina has moved on to IJ Action, and we are hiring a new executive director. Antoinette is the interim right now, and we are actually, we have an application that is being accepted until 5 p.m. on Wednesday, September 14th. So if you all are interested, everybody's absolutely encouraged to submit an application, um, throw your hat in the ring. If you wanna be a part of Initiate Justice as the executive director, um, please um, go ahead and, and put in your application. I think Antoinette or someone will be dropping in the tiny URL link right now. So if anybody is interested in that, then you all can please, please um, go ahead and, and put in your application. Um, Antoinette, do you wanna talk about the statewide advocacy manager or do you want me to? Yeah, thank you, Lee. I don't mind going ahead and doing that update. 
<laughs> Thank you, Anna. Um, and so, yeah, so for those who maybe aren't familiar, interim means temporary. Um, and so when organizations go through a transition, there is someone that is uh, appointed like by the board to help carry the organization through that transition and pass it along to its official executive director. And so that's what it means um, in my role as the interim executive director. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Christy. Um, but we're also hiring more. So we have a position that is opening up on Friday and we are hiring a new statewide advocacy manager. Um, and so our statewide advocacy manager position, like I mentioned, is going to open up on Friday, September 9th. And so one, first and foremost, wanting to acknowledge that yes, we did previously have a statewide advocacy manager, the wonderful Daisy, who is no longer with Initiate Justice, um, but also wanting to acknowledge um, that this particular position looks a little bit different. Um, we've gone through kind of identifying what our, our needs are as an organization. So make sure that when that position opens up, even if you knew Daisy, you absolutely were familiar with the work that she did, make sure you read through that job uh, description once it is released on September 9th before actually applying. Um, but it is a full-time position. Yes, Christy, absolutely agree. Um, so our uh, statewide advocacy manager is a full-time position with an expected start date of October 3rd. So the application will open this Friday. It'll be open for about a week. So applications are due no later than Friday, September 16th, next Friday by 7 p.m. And so all that information will be available once the application is released on Friday to everyone. Um, but be on the lookout for that. We'll post it on our socials. We'll send out an email. Um, we'll make sure that you are all informed. This role will be supporting Initiate Justice's overall organizing team by managing our outside organizing base and managing our Institute of Impacted Leaders program as well. Um, it will be California based. So this location we are hiring for someone who is in California. As you all know, we advocate for statewide policy change um, and our organizers are spread throughout California. Um, and there will be some travel required whether to our LA office um, or to facilitate um, events and organizing efforts throughout the state. Um, and also be prepared, if you intend to apply, be prepared to provide both a resume and a cover letter, cover letter, sorry, as well as references um, for the application. But super excited to be expanding our team once again. Like Lee mentioned, we're hiring a, an executive director, we're hiring a statewide advocacy manager, um, and then also definitely wanting to acknowledge and, and encourage everyone to apply um, to, to either of these positions if you are interested. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, everyone. Um, and if there are any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll be sure to get to them. Thanks so much, Antoinette, for, for covering that part. And now we're gonna do some general committee updates. We're gonna give um, Efrain a chance and, and Sarah and, and Greg, they're gonna, we're gonna be guided by a slide um, that's prepared by our wonderful comms team, Michelle and Ra. And then we're gonna have you know, a few minutes um, to go ahead and highlight what the committees are doing. This is where for some of you all that have joined us before, you know that normally we come on and we give them personal updates. We're trying something new and we're, we're looking to continue to expand and we're looking to continue to kind of adjust and, and change things up a little bit. And so drop in the chats what you're thinking about the slides and, and how you're feeling. Um, and so with that said, let me just go ahead and, and pass it over to, I think it's Antoinette um, and next who is going to give like a review of the slides and then we're gonna have Efrain and Greg and Sarah jump in. So please Antoinette, take it away. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so yes, Efrain, if I can ask you to share the committee slides um, and we'll just first want to give everyone an overview of all of the committees. Um, some of you are engaged in multiple of these, but wanting to give you the upcoming meeting dates and what's happening with all of our committees and then we're going to have Efrain um, as well as our advocacy committee spotlight what they're doing in their two committees. So um, right now I'm going to go through all of them 
And then we're going to allow, like I said, our inside membership committee with Efrain, um, as well as our advocacy committee with Greg and Sarah, take some time to talk to you all about their wins, what they've been working on, um, and what's happening in their committees. So first and foremost is our inside organizing committee. So our inside organizing committee is actually led by Lee, who is co-hosting here. So what our inside organizing committee does is train new inside organizers by reviewing curriculums or training people via phone um, as needed. And their next meeting is actually going to be next month. Um, because they're, uh, yeah, so they're, sorry, their next meeting is actually going to be next month on Thursday, October 6th um, at 5.30 p.m. Um, Lee, if you have anything to add on your committee, go ahead. If not, I'm going to um, briefly introduce the others before passing it to Efrain and um, No, I think that's good. We just met on 9-1, so that's the reason we didn't have a, it's not listed up there now, and so we look forward to new folks joining us, and I know there's some that are here today, and we just always have a wonderful time, and thank you so much for everybody that shows up and assist in educating and empowering our incarcerated folks. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, so typically that would be the point when we would say, hey, our inside organizing meetings are the Thursday after our member meetings, but it happened a little bit differently, but usually you can type some in, um, but we also have our inside membership committee. So we have our organizers on the inside, but we also have our members on the inside, as many of you know. And so our inside membership committee really just serves to support our inside members by either inputting those who are interested in becoming a member into the database, responding to mail from our members, um, or even helping assist with our insight journal that goes out to all of our inside members. And so if you want us to help support our inside membership committee, which means supporting our over 45,000 inside members, then you can join our inside membership committee and you can also help them think through new ways um, and creative ways that we can uplift and amplify incarcerated voices. And so if you are interested in helping us actually this time write messages to our incarcerated artists, which you'll hear a little bit more about from SIN later, uh, then join our inside membership committee actually next week, next Wednesday on the 14th at 5.30 p.m. Definitely exciting um, information coming from our inside membership committee in a moment. We also have our healing committee, which we were introduced to by our grounding exercise at the beginning, hosted by OCA. And so our healing committee meets as often as needed, but Something that is recurring every single month is our Mindful Monday spaces. There is a space for everyone. There's a space for men. There's a space for people who are formerly incarcerated. And there's a space for people who have loved ones currently or formerly incarcerated. And if you go to initiatejustice.org slash healing, then you'll be able to see all of those upcoming dates. Um, and they happen, as the name implies, on Mondays um, throughout the month. And if you're interested in supporting in other ways, like helping build resources, host grounding, host space um, in a healing capacity, then you can email OCA at joinhealing at initiatejustice.org. Again, that's joinhealing at initiatejustice.org if you're interested in supporting the healing committee as that committee meets on an as needed basis. And our last two committees. Um, are going to be our advocacy committee, which focuses on everything about our bills. Um, what happens? How do they go through the legislative process? What can we do? When do we do it? All of those questions um, and all of those opportunities you will find through our advocacy committee hosted by Greg and Sarah. Tons of ways to plug into our advocacy committee, so I will let them um, share all of those different opportunities later when they talk about what's been happening with our bills. And then our last of our five committees is our outside membership committee. Our outside membership committee focuses on creating um, and building new ways for us to engage the community in our work um, and also for us to engage with our existing members. So how can we continue to keep our existing members engaged while also um, reaching out to and connecting with new members and community. 
who are impacted that can support our work and that also would love to have their voices amplified through our work as well. And so to help brainstorm ways that we can do that, you can join our outside membership committee that we meet on the fourth Wednesday of every month and the next one being on the 28th of this month, September 28th. So all of our committees, the committee meetings themselves start at 5.30 p.m. to access the dates for every single committee, when they meet, RSVP for that meeting, et cetera, then you can go to our website. And if you go to initiatejustice.org slash calendar, which I will also plug into the chat, that's how you can access all of these links. So we didn't drop any of them into the chat because to access all of them, you just simply need to go to initiatejustice.org slash calendar. And that's how you can get to, thank you for highlighting that on the screen as well. So if you wanna take a picture of the screen, you can also do that, it might be super helpful. Um, but if you want to just refresh your memory about each of these committees and go learn a little bit more about each committee and see their events specifically, then you can go to initiatejustice.org slash committees. Again, initiatejustice.org slash committees to see details and events for each committee specifically. As a reminder, there are no requirements, no experience, no qualification needed to support or engage with any of our committees. Everyone is welcome. You're welcome to bring a friend. You're welcome to come and go as you please and as you feel compelled to do so. Um, so definitely welcome you all into all of our committee spaces. Um, if you're new here for the first time and this all sounds a little bit new and you have some questions, jot them down. There's gonna be a few minutes later for you to upload any questions that are coming up if all of this information is new to you. Um, if you're here for the first time or returning after a very long time, et cetera. But that is all I have for committee updates. I'm going to thank you, Efrain, for sharing this screen for me. Are there any immediate questions, um, something that folks need, need to repeat if you're not able to look at the screen or look at the chat before we pass it to two of our amazing committees to update us on what has been going on in their world? No. Okay, I hope that means that everything was clear and not that I lost some of you by talking too fast, which I tend to do. Um, all right, well, I am going to, again, any questions, write them down, bring them up later. Um, we're gonna be sharing out um, a little bit more from two of these particular committees in just a moment. And so to do that, I'm gonna pass it over to Efrain with our Inside Membership Committee. Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, I see some new faces. Glad to have all of you here. Um, as many of you all know, we did our launch event for the art gallery uh, this past month. Um, and we wanted to do a quick recap of the art gallery. Um, if you have not seen it, please go to our website or you could follow us on YouTube. It's also on YouTube. Check out the launch event. Um, uh, with all the amazing art, the stories of the artists um, and things of that nature. So definitely welcome uh, for those that are here for the first time, check out our website. You can go to www.initiatejustice forward slash the art gallery and uh, definitely check it out. Um, with that, give me one second. I will share my screen. So the art gallery, abolition, resistance, and transformation. 
we're as i mentioned we're here to close out the experience but it doesn't mean that we're closing out our shop you can still continue to do so to buy purchase products initiate justice working to end incarceration by activating the political power of the people directly impacted our inside members are deeply connected to these efforts and showed us their advocacy through the arts Art is not what you see, but what you make others see by Edgar Dick Degas. The artists featured in the art gallery allowed us to share a piece of them and their experience through their own words, expressions, and artwork. These are the moments which have connected our inside and outside communities. We shall carry these with us as we move towards abolition. Here we have a letter from one of the artists, Raul Gonzalez, who did the hands of time. And it reads, my name is Raul, and I created my artwork while at Jamestown Sea Art. I use a big pen and a piece of cardstock while serving a 34 to life sentence. It's a reflect reflection of life behind the walls, both physically and mentally. After being locked up for so long, we start to feel forgotten and abandoned. Those of us, those of us who are fortunate enough to have family know they love us, but their absence and the struggles we face make it make us feel like we're falling apart. The physical restraints used on us for years and years leave marks on our wrists and on our souls. Despite everything, God is with us to give us comfort. Good people will always stand up and fight for what is right and fair for the less fortunate. This is what gives us hope and begins a healing process. This is what gives us life and makes us want to do good. Again, this was by Raul Gonzalez, the artist behind the hands of time. For those that are new, this is a final recap of some of the art that was featured for the art gallery, Abolition, Resistance, and Transformation. Welcome y'all to share. Maybe you bought some of the prints, the originals. Share with which one you really love, which one you connected with. I welcome you all to share this on the chat. share also this letter from Jesse Milo, who the artist behind Hope is Queen. Y'all are motivation to me. I don't know where I'd be without you all fighting for me. When things get hard and I want to give up, I'm strengthened by you all out there. You give me hope. I wish we could all live forever, but for whatever time we are here on earth, I'm glad and I'm grateful you had my back in the struggle. Not just my struggle for freedom, but the struggle for us all to build a better future. Thank you for the time and effort invested in the gallery project and, and, and giving a voice to those that are seldom heard. Jesse Mario. Lastly, I wanted to take this time you know, on behalf of Initiate Justice 
thank you to all the artists and their families, to Progressive Multiplier who helped donate to make this all possible. Thank you to the Inside Membership Committee members for really helping us brainstorm these ideas and put this beautiful art gallery together. Thank you to those who purchased the originals, prints, t-shirts, or an auction item and have supported these incarcerated artists. Thank you to you all. I just wanted to remind you again, it's kind of a recap. It's not the end of it. Um, the shop will continue to remain open. If you have not purchased your products, please go ahead, check them out. There's t-shirts, prints, some originals still there. Um, as you all can see, weren't mine. Um, but definitely uh, purchase our products here, are just some of them, samples of them. And you can do so by going to www.initiatejustice.org or slash art shop. Again, this will be open till August 2023. Definitely, thank you all again. I just, you know, I can't express all the gratitude that we have here at Initiate Justice. Everybody just coming together to be able to put such a beautiful art gallery together. Um, uh, if you have not, definitely go check us out, check out the shop, um, purchase something. Um, you know, beautiful, beautiful work that um, these artists gave us. So thank you all again. I pass it back over to Lee, I believe. Yeah, thank you so much, Efrain. I really appreciate you being able to highlight that and all the hard work that the Inside Membership Committee has been able to do with comms and everybody else on the team to bring that to light. And, you know, it's all about bringing our folks home. And part of bringing our folks home are our bills and our policies that we're really trying to enact and, and being able to pass. And so with that, let's just go ahead and pass it right over to Sarah and Greg, the Advocacy Committee. Thank you, Lee. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Greg. Uh, I'm sorry for the lighting if you can't really see me right now. Uh, I'm the policy director for Initiate Justice. I'll pass to my colleague Sarah in a minute to review our bills and other big bills this year that are moving forward for criminal justice reform in California. Uh, so with that, uh, Sarah, please introduce yourself and kick us off. Thanks, Greg. So as Greg mentioned, I am Sarah. I'm the policy analyst here at Initiate Justice. So together, Greg and I make up our policy team. This year, I am proud to share that all of our co-sponsored bills currently passed the legislature and are at the governor's desk. So this is um, an incredible moment and very exciting to be able to share with all of you tonight. The first bill that we're going to share about is AB 256, the Racial Justice Act for All, introduced and authored by Assemblymember Kalra, actually introduced last year. So this is a two-year bill, a two-year struggle to have California recognize racism in the courtroom and recognize the harm that it's caused in sentencing, right? So under the RJA for All, you ha now have a legal pathway to challenge um, explicitly racist behavior by anyone involved in the court, so judge, law enforcement, uh, the use of discriminatory language, racial bias in jury selection, but then also to use statistical discrepancies, whether it be in charging or sentencing, to challenge our uh, racist sentencing practices. So very exciting, very monumental step for California and um, yeah, just great to be able to come back this second year and bring retroactivity, retroactivity to the bill and make sure that nobody's getting left behind. Also with Assemblymember Kalra, we have the um, Alternatives to Incarceration Bill, so AB 2167. This bill requires the court to consider alternatives instead or outside of incarceration before sentencing somebody to prison. So obviously this is much needed. We know too many people anyone, if there's anyone, it's too many people, um, are spending time in prison when we know that we have the alternatives out there or if they don't exist, we can build them. So this is a step to making that a reality. 
Additionally, we have 2195 by Assemblymember Jones Sawyer, the Alternate, Alternate Drug Plea Act. This is very exciting because it protects Californians from some of the lasting collateral consequences of a drug conviction. Um, and specifically for undocumented Californians, Californians, some of those consequences can mean deportation. So this bill protects folks from that by creating an alternate plea uh, free from some of those collateral consequences. We also have our last assembly bill, AB 2632 by assembly member Holden, which is our solitary bill, right? So this is our bill to challenge the use of solitary confinement and it even prohibits it for some populations. Then we have our Senate bill for the year, which was Senate Bill 1106 by Senator Weiner, the Fresh Start Act. Another great bill, obviously they're all great bills, we're very excited for all of them, but the Fresh Start Act would prohibit unpaid restitution from acting as a barrier to record relief. And that means all types of record relief. So whether it's resentencing or expungement, unpaid restitution can no longer be used as the sole reason to deny folks any type of that relief. It's been a very intense year, so it's been awesome to take a couple moments to celebrate with all of you. And we also just want to give a huge thanks to, of course, all of our all of our coworkers, all of our members, all of our supporters, but especially all of our co-sponsors, right? So with all of these bills, Initiate Justice is one of a group of co-sponsors that help make sure that the bill is helping the most amount of people that it's passed and um, yeah, just making sure it crosses the finish line. So if you have any questions about any of these bills, you're interested and wanna learn more, or if you're curious about some of the folks we work with, you can always check out the policy work tab and then current legislation on our website and that'll take you to all of these these wonderful bills and you can learn more but of course initiate justice isn't the only one with bills waiting on the governor's desk the governor has until the 30th to sign them and so I will pass to Greg to talk about some of the other legislation that's waiting to be signed thank you Sarah uh, so there's a list of bills here um, I don't think I'll go through all of them. I'll maybe pick a few to highlight, uh, but this is a list of bills that we think um, uh, provides the most, makes the most difference for folks inside, right? So there's a lot of bills that are not on this list that are still awesome progress, very significant contributing to our work to end mass incarceration, of course. Uh, but these are the bills that we select that are related to resentencing, uh, you know, improving the conditions uh, while confined uh, helping with reentry and support once they're home. Uh, and this is actually a list of bills that we send to our inside members um, and that we will be sending in our next journal edition, uh, letting folks know what was signed, what was vetoed and what they can expect. Um, so I wanna start by maybe highlighting uh, my personal favorite. I'll take a moment of privilege there to highlight SB 1304 with Senator Kamlager. Uh, this is a bill that will increase gate money uh, which is the money that is given to someone upon release from state prison from its current amount of $200 uh, up to $1,300. So the $200 that is given as, as gate money, as money once you're released from prison, is a figure that has not increased since 1973, or maybe even 1972. So it's like 50 years old, right, that they haven't increased the money, I think, adjusted for an inflation. What $200 in 1972 is today is about $2,500. Um, but the $1,300 is, is obviously significant and is a huge win. Uh, and if this bill gets signed by the governor, uh, just as any other bill on this list, it will go into effect January 1st, 2023. Uh, so I think the gate money bill is a really, really impressive one. Uh, I'm also a really big fan of SB 1209 with Senator Eggman. Um, I do not believe that uh, Glenn is here this evening, but Glenn is one of our IJ members. Uh, longtime IJ members who, who was part of the inspiration behind this bill. SB 1209 just ensures that more veterans, so folks who uh, served in the military, uh, who served our country, uh, who came home with a diagnosis of PTSD or some other form of trauma that has not been recognized as the courts under previous bills to allow veterans to get resentenced, uh, will not be left behind with this bill. So 1209 is significant, A, because it's uh, going to help people get free but B, because it also recognizes the effects of trauma can have uh, later effects on people's decisions and actions 
not just in the moment, since it is obviously uh, expands the definition of understanding what trauma is and what it does to people's brains. Um, I think another bill to highlight here, and then we can take questions and then move on, is AB 960 with, with the Assemblymember Ting. This is a bill that actually Sarah had done a lot of work on in the past. Uh, AB 960 improves the medical parole process so more folks can be eligible for compassionate release. Obviously, uh, the pandemic is still ongoing. I know we've all adjusted and we live with it, but inside prison, it's the same issues with social distancing, masks, issues like that. And the compassionate release is not a program that uh, currently allows a lot of folks to get resentenced and come home, especially those who are towards the end of their life or who have you know, terminal illnesses, things like that. Uh, so AB 960 will be a huge improvement in that regard. Um, I think it's also worth spending a moment to just talk about like the political climate and what we started this year with. Uh, what you don't see on this list is all the bad bills that we and many others in this space helped to defeat. So there was uh, kind of still ongoing, I think, with the media, a lot of hysteria around shoplifting and property crimes and things of that nature. And so at the beginning of the year, there were many attempts to roll back Prop 47 to increase the penalties, to increase jail time for shoplifting, other poverty related crimes. We know that's just, you know, the playbook out of the tough on crime, 80s and 90s era. We know that it doesn't work. You can't incarcerate your way to safety. That just literally doesn't make sense on any level. But a lot of elected officials thought they could do that or they wanted to respond to the headlines and things like that. So we started the year defeating a whole host of bad bills. And then to be here at the end of the year or the end of the legislative cycle at least, with these, this many really awesome bills that are gonna help people, um, I think is honestly better than I thought how the year could have turned out. Um, and I think it was like a fairly decent year, um, this many good bills helping folks inside directly. Uh, so I'm proud of the work that Initiate Justice, of course, but all the other people in this space who are doing amazing work. Way too many people to mention, as Sarah uh, you know, alluded to a moment ago, but each bill behind this, there's sponsors who are pulling their hair out, working all night, putting out fires, doing everything it takes to get these passed. Um, and so it's awesome to be a part of a movement of folks who are that dedicated. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I will actually spend a few minutes mentioning some bills that did not pass this year, uh, which of course is heartbreaking and something that uh, hopefully we can you know, change the culture, change hearts and minds so they can be successful in the future. Uh, the first bill I want to mention is AB 937 with Assemblymember Carrillo, the Vision Act and ICE transfers after completion of a prison sentence. Um, I know Val and a lot of IJ, our, our IJ members did a lot of work for this one through down. I think it ultimately fell about three votes short and did not clear the Senate, so it did not go to the governor. Um, you know, the ICE deportation machine and that whole pipeline is something the governor with the stroke of a pen with an executive order could stop. Uh, but his resistance to that and his hesitancy and then other senators who got on board with that is um, just disgusting and is a stain on our the legislature and um, was really, really disappointed to see what happened with that bill. The SB 300 was another bill that a lot of folks on this call I know spent a lot of time advocating for. It ultimately was not successful either. It cleared the first house, uh, but then stalled in, in the assembly. Uh, that was a two-thirds measure, which is always going to be more difficult to get to the threshold of votes needed when you have two-thirds, just very simple majority. Uh, and then finally, back in June, there was the really bad news around ACA 3, Senator Kamlager's uh, constitutional amendment that if it had qualified, we'd be voting for it in November, we would get that passed, and you'd get indentured servitude out of California's constitution, uh, but unfortunately it did not pass. So, you know, with the good news, there's always the other side of it. Uh, these three bills, um, I'm hopeful, will come back in the future. And again, um, you know, I think uh, I think even if I reflect on some of the things that we were not successful on, I think you learn a lot from the failure. Um, and if you come back in the future, you'll know. Don't repeat these mistakes. You know, have these things figured out, so you'll be ready to go. Uh, but I also think <laughs> there's something to be said at some point of just chicken shit politicians that we have to get out of there if we want these big important bills to pass. Um, so with that, we just have one final slide about staying um, involved with us and our work. Um, I know we talked a moment ago about our upcoming events, um, but here you have our contact information, what we're planning this month. You can join 
uh, Sarah next week on Instagram Live on Wednesday at Initiate Justice, and then come join us on Zoom for our other sessions. Thank you, Greg. Yes, we went through that pretty fast, but as Greg mentioned, we'll review all of this on Instagram Live, and we have our advocacy committee meeting this month on Tuesday, uh, September 20th. Virtually, always at 5.30, we'll, we'll go over um, more bills, more updates, and of course, have time for any questions. And then we also have Abolition Corner, which this month is focusing on um, tough on crime rhetoric and how to challenge, how to talk about it with your loved ones, especially when, as Greg mentioned, there is more of this tough on crime rhetoric and legislation that we're seeing. So uh, join us any of these Tuesdays or Wednesday on Instagram Live for more information. And always reach out if you have any questions. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Uh, really quickly, I'm going to respond to Amy's question. Do you anticipate the governor will sign most or all of our bills? Uh, so I think there's actually been some pretty, uh, some warning signs out there that the governor is not intending to be progressive. Uh, I'm not sure if he will sign all of IJ's bills, and I would not imagine that he signs all the bills on the slides that I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, I think a couple weeks ago, Senator, uh, Senator Weiner sent a bill to the governor to, uh, you know, allow for the clean needle injection sites and consistent with all the literature and research on safe drug use and decriminalizing everything. Uh, and the governor vetoed it, right, because of his own ambitions and things like that and worried about the headlines and all those things. And so I think there's always going to be a difference between good policy and good politics. So what we understand to be good policy and what's needed is going to be different from what Newsom thinks is good, good, good politics, good optics for him. And I think those are things that um, I'm hopeful it'll be pretty good for us, but I don't think it'd be real, realistic for us to sit here and think everything will be signed. And, you know, the proper expectations sometimes helps when you get bad news. Um, so when we get more information on our bills, which again, could happen any time from now to September 30th. So we could get off the Zoom and get the news about our bills, but, or it could be next week or anytime September 29th at 11.58 p.m., right? Anytime up to the 30th is when we'll know. And when we know, of course, we'll put the information out there and share it with you all. But again, it was, I think, a really good year for us, for everybody in the space. And that is, you know, all of you who help have a big, big part of that. So thank you. Yeah, everyone can come to Advocacy Committee and we'll place bets on, on it. I'm, I'm completely kidding, but come to Advocacy Committee and we can talk more about it. Wait, there's gambling involved? I'm in. I'm just kidding. No, thank you so much. I really appreciate like the, the new slides and um, the committee updates, everything with the art gallery slides and what the inside membership committee and everybody that's working behind the scenes and comms and everybody to put all that together and always, always, always our policy team. They do so much work behind the scenes and we just want to recognize you, make sure that, you know, you all know that we so, so like appreciate you and, and we know that like this is a huge part of the work that we do. Um, the folks inside, the family members, the loved ones, everybody that has rallied around these bills, rallied around the other bills that the other legislators have kind of put forward that is going to move this needle to prison abolition, I think is, is super important to us. And I know that we're making a difference and I know that we're, we're continuously like pushing along. So if any of you all want to join up with any of the, any of the new members or some of the veteran members that want to join another committee, Please don't hesitate to sign up for that committee. If Efrain or Antoinette could please drop the the tiny URL in the in the chat box, like you're more than welcome to to join any of us. Just come in. Like it's going to take a community to continue to move these move these things along and and making sure that we're bringing all of our loved ones and our folks home and making our community safe, um, which is our ultimate goal here. And so with that, I'm going to move it right over to Antoinette. Thank you, Lee. And I'm just dropping into the chat one more time um, our calendar, a link to our calendar, so that you can register for any of our committee meetings. But real quick, um, I know there there might be questions like about the art gallery. There might be questions about our bills. So I just want to uh, real quick drop some of our contacts into the chat. So for those who might have questions, for instance, on the art gallery or in, in any other way, how you can support our inside members and our inside membership committee, 
um, then you can contact either Crystal or Ephraim. Um, if you are, and that was a really long list that I just dropped into the chat. So I should have did it one by one, my apologies. Um, that was the intention as I was speaking. Again, for the inside membership committee, you can contact either Crystal or Ephraim. So that's anything regarding our inside members, regarding the art gallery, regarding our inside journal. Um, if you wanna support with any of those efforts or have questions, reach out to Crystal or Ephraim whose emails were just dropped into the chat. Um, but then also our advocacy committee did just share a lot, right? Huge successes with some of our bills, some definite losses, um, but nonetheless progress with the help of all of you that we will continue to achieve. And so if you're interested in being more engaged, have questions for our advocacy committee, um, join them. But also you can email Greg and Sarah here um, as the emails drop into the chat. Maybe you have a question that they can address in the next committee meeting. Um, so definitely wanting you to send any questions um, to our committee members. And then also for our other committees, those links, are, sorry, those emails were also dropped into the chat. So for inside organizing, it would be Lee at initiatejustice.org or Adam at initiatejustice.org. And again, that's inside organizing, that's helping to train, um, educate and empower our organizers that are currently incarcerated in these prisons throughout California. And then for our outside membership committee, we can email myself um, and that is Antoinette at initiatejustice.org. And for healing, you can contact joinhealing at initiatejustice.org for any questions or to find out how you can support our healing committee um, with, with any of their efforts. And as a reminder, you do not have to have any experience to participate in a committee. You can even just drop into a committee because you're curious to see how they work and what they work on and what it looks like. Um, and that is okay if you're not ready to participate but want to observe and learn. Um, that is definitely welcome in all of our spaces, so please do not hesitate to still join us. I'm also wanting to bring us back up to the top with our organizational updates and just provide quick reminders that the application for the executive director role is due no later than um, 5 p.m on Wednesday, September 14th. And you can expect to see the application for the statewide advocacy manager drop into your email or your social media timeline somewhere um, this Friday, September 9th. And the deadline to apply for that is next Friday, September 16th. Um, long recap, but that's a lot. There's a lot happening. I'm also wanting to create space briefly for people who are here for the very first time. If you're here for the first time, you might not have understood everything that we talked about tonight, and that is completely okay. We're here to help you understand those things one way or another. One of those ways is through sort of a, a new member orientation, um, which is just an introduction to our work, a little bit about how we got here and a little bit about how we sustain um, change or how we make change, sorry. So if you are here for the very first time, please make sure you let us know by dropping your name into the chat or just saying, your name's already there, just saying, I am a new member, um, I'm here for the first time. You can just put first timer, but let us know in the chat if you have access to it, if you are here for the very first time. Um, and if for any reason you don't have access to the chat, wanting to give you space to just go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce your name, um, and let us know how you found us if you can't do so in the chat. I do see a couple of people letting us know already, so thank you, Chris. Happy to have you here. I've seen a couple of other folks who are joining us for the very first time earlier in the meeting. So also wanting to just acknowledge and say thank you to those folks for being here. Um, but if you didn't let us know at the beginning, please let us know now. We actually go back and review the chat. Um, well, I certainly do. Um, but we go back and, re and review the chat to make sure questions are answered and our people who are here for the very first time are properly welcomed. 
um, and are oriented to our work. So for those who maybe have heard or maybe were told, hey, go to the member meeting and stay afterwards for the new member orientation. Well, you don't have to anymore. We'll be contacting you um, regarding that orientation. And with that information, you don't have to hang back until nine o'clock like we used to ask you to do. Um, to fulfill that end, we'll be connecting with you regarding what that new process is going to look like. Um, but also, although some things have changed and that is pretty much our member meeting for tonight, we do still have a couple of traditions such as our member of the month and just closing us out with final remarks. So um, once again, if you're here for the first time, don't forget to let us know into the chat, sorry, in the chat. And if you haven't already, make sure you join one of our committees and also make sure you tune in to all of the different spaces that our advocacy committee has to, to stay updated on our bills um, as they get hopefully signed by the governor. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to pass it over to Lee with some of our final uh, closing traditions. Me? I yes, the you. Yes. Of introducing the member of the month and just a shout out to all y'all in California that are kind of dealing with the, the power outages and the rolling blackouts. Like, we appreciate everybody making all the sacrifices to be able to be here tonight. And, um, to make sure that they're <laughs> yeah, really sweating it out. And so, you know, our member of the month has been an active member for over a year, helps add names to our inside member database. Like Antoinette was talking about, and I mentioned earlier, we have over 46,000 members, folks that are inside um, that receive the inside journal. This person has been very active in making sure that everybody is housing and the new folks are properly entered into the database so they can receive that inside journal. They also help translate the inside journal. You know, it's a lot of bilingual folks are inside and get to receive that information. Also, we want to be able to be as inclusive as we possibly can as capacity allows. And this person has responded to mail from the inside members. You know, there's many requests, things that come in from folks. And so unless they're on an AKA, I didn't see their name in the thing, but we can still give them some love. We can shout them out and we can make sure that we follow up with them and let them know and share this part of the recording with them. Um, Victor Martinez is our member of the month. If you're here, Victor, under an AKA, you're more than welcome to jump off of the mute and give us a few words if you want to. And if not, we'll bombard you with some, some emails. And, and make sure that we give you the love that you properly deserve. Yes, thank you. And like round of applause for Victor. Um, as some of you may already know, and for those of you who don't, we have over 45,000 people incarcerated in prisons throughout the state of California that receive our Inside Journal, um, that reach out to us uh, for resources, um, and some of those that participated and supported and contributed art to our art gallery, et cetera. And so having Victor's support to make sure people who are interested are in our, in our database, make sure that our journals translated and people in Spanish can also read, access this information is extremely critical. So just wanting to say thank you um, if you are watching this after the recording is posted, Victor, we appreciate you. Yeah, I want to, Antoinette, if I may, I just wanted to uh, really congratulate Victor as well. Um, hopefully, I know he'll be seeing this recording. And really just with the, you know, he's a pivotal part in our translation process. And, um, you know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, but he's, he's, he's amazing when it comes down to it. As you all know, we're getting bill updates and we're trying to get the information inside as soon as possible. And uh, he's a huge part in getting the translations done uh, immediately. So really just want to shout him out, shout him, shout him out for that and, and all the hard work and dedication he has, he has put in uh, translating, helping us translate the inside journal. So really, thank you very much, Victor. I don't want to take space away from other people. So they want to give a little bit of love to Victor. I know that you've been blowing up the chat box. I appreciate uh, everybody putting in there, giving him some congratulations. 
I know that he'll be sad that he missed it, but glad that he was able to earn it because that's what he did. He's really put in a lot of work with the, with the inside um, membership committee and with IJ and showing up and participating. And we really appreciate him and his leadership and his ability to continue to kind of, you know, push this needle, like I said before, of prison abolition. Um, if no one else wants to chime in about Victor, I'll go ahead and give some closing remarks about our next member meeting it is Wednesday, October 5th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. You can register at the tiny URL. I'm sure somebody will drop it in the, the chat box in a second and um, allow us uh, announcements for people that want to sign up for the membership meetings. You can join IJ at tinyurl.com backslash join IJ. Um, and with that said, our new membership orientation, you know, this was a new uh, approach in progress and we're reviewing some of the things, how we kind of do this. And normally we end with folks staying back and we kind of talk to them a little bit, but for the new attendees that want to learn no more about the, what we do here at IJ, please, I think we're going to drop something here in the chat box. Um, Antoinette, you may... You may come in if there's something that I missed right here that uh, just kind of remind the folks that we really appreciate you showing up and we want you to be able to, you know, come in to any of the committees or just the membership committee, whatever the case may be, we have a space for you. We have um, a place where we can amplify your voices, making sure that you are participating, you are helping us lead this charge and you are assisting in all of the wonderful things that not only that IJ is doing, but some of our allies in this um, fight against uh, the in prison industrial complex and, and prison abolition and making sure that we're bringing our, all of our folks home. So I don't have anything else to add. If nobody has anything, um, you can drop in the chat box and what you think about the new meeting and, and the new format and how, how everything went. Or if you have any questions, you know, you can always hit us up. I know Antoinette dropped the, all of the emails um, Adam at uh, initiatejustice.org, Efrain at initiatejustice.org, Sarah at initiatejustice.org, Antoinette, oh, you know everybody's names. You can, you can hit them up on emails, making sure that they understand that you have questions or that you just have comments, and we'll be sure to respond to all of your emails as quickly as we possibly can. Efrain, go ahead. One last plug, definitely for the new the, the new members today. Definitely go check out our website. You know, we gave you know we gave you a lot. Check out the calendar events, but really start off with the art gallery and check out the beautiful art that uh, we displayed earlier. Um, join us uh, for the inside membership committee. We're going to be giving out gratitude to all the artists. Um, so please definitely join us. Uh, continue to support the incarcerated artists. Uh, as I mentioned, we're you know. I know a couple of us got the shirts over. Oh, they I see the show. You know, we've had people bought prints and everything like that. So definitely continue to support our incarcerated artists. Uh, um, and you know, thank them for the amazing work that they're doing. So thank you all for being here again. I wanted to uh go ahead. Me. No, you're good. I think we're good. I think everybody, please have a wonderful night. Be safe, show love to everybody. Thank you so much to Oka and for everybody that has showed up tonight and, and given us a little bit of their spirit and their love and their hearts. Like we really appreciate you and we can't wait to see you in our committee member meetings or in our next membership meeting. Antoinette, did you have any last things to say before we sign off? I don't, but I can. Thank you, everyone. And I hope that people are enjoying an end to a really hot summer and hopefully the beginning of a very cool fall um, as we get through this heat wave and these power outages and things. So just want to say thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight.